and welcome to Jessie James Beads. I'm Jem, I'm from the UK and I'm here with you today to talk about Adventure Awaits. Beautiful, beautiful mini mix pot of the most sumptuous summery colours you can imagine. I'm thinking about spring arriving at some point soon, I hope. I don't know what the, re what the weather is quite where you are today, um, but it's a bit ugh, here today. It's a bit miserable and cold and I'm not enjoying it. And I'm really, really ready for some adventure and definitely for spring. I have a beautiful, beautiful blend of beads, as I say, and I'm going to show those to you in a second. I've also added in the happiest length of chain I think I've ever seen in my life. It's Daffodil from the Spring Summer 2022 colour trends range. Do you know what? Today I have been writing 2020 all year. I don't know what's gone wrong with my brain. It's super extra mushy today. How are you today? What's it like where you are? What have you been up to? Tell me everything. I'm going to show you on the board now the bead blend that we're going to use, the glorious chain that we're going to add in, and a little hint at the technique that we're going to learn. It is achievable if you are newer to wire work. We're going to be using three different gauges of wire, all very, very simple round wires with copper core and I will explain about those wires when we get to use them but for right now I want you to see the fabulous springtime is coming colours that we're going to work with. So this is the piece that we're going to learn to make together today, that's our creative aspect. In my mind's eye it looked like a beautiful lamp something that you might see in a North African market somewhere in a souk, maybe in Egypt, maybe in Morocco. It's just got those beautiful rich colours to it, a bit of spice maybe, but definitely Adventure Time is coming. These are the beads that I've drawn out of the blend for us to work with today. I really, really love it when the tassels are connected back into the cap. I really enjoy that aspect of them. Obviously I love all tassels, tassels are brilliant, there's lots and lots of different types that you can get but these are so cool and so much fun. Our focal bead today is probably why it makes me think of a sook or a bazaar or something, it's just beautiful. And then we've got some crackle agate, some people refer to it as crab agate, some people refer to it as dragon's vein agate. It is a quenched stone and it is absolutely gorgeous alongside lightly AB coated crystal rondelles and these absolutely fabulous buttery gold. I want to call them spacers, but they're so much more. They're absolutely huge. They'd make a fantastic ring, actually, thinking about it now. Perhaps that's something I can do on a future tutorial if you would find that of interest and then we have these other glorious toned beads still in the pot to play with later let me just have a look and see if i am able to see who is there and if anything is happening on facebook sometimes it's a little bit tricky and it doesn't show me no it's telling me that i can't see any comments at the moment which is always really really cool so I'm flying without you in my ears today, I'm afraid. I don't know who's there and what you're saying, so I'll have to check that out when the video is up later. So um, if there are any questions, what I will do, once the video has finished processing, it will be uploaded forever on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page, which is where we are right now. And I'll run through those comments and if there are any questions I'll have to address them then. If you're watching this on YouTube or on the blog then you can always reach out to me on Facebook on my page or via the Jesse James page and if there are unanswered questions I will do my best to catch up with you then. So what happens after the video is finished it will be uploaded as I say onto Facebook, it goes into some of the Jesse James Beads groups, onto the blog and probably Monday or Tuesday it will end up on YouTube as well. So if you're watching me and wondering what I'm talking about, that is indeed what I'm talking about. Let's get back down to the board and look at those beads. I'm sorry I can't interact with you directly today. That is the way it is going to be, I'm afraid. Let's have a look at those beads. Stunning, stunning, stunning colour and the combination absolutely gorgeous. Let me just grab out the yellow and the orange dragon's vein agates and just see if you can see those gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Sometimes referred to as crab agate, it's dragon's vein, it's a quenched gemstone. 
really really love those absolutely love this blend and you've got some sunshiny blues in there as well as some wooden and bronzy browns wooden tones i mean not wooden beads of some fabulous space as well the daisy spacer is almost star shape in this blend gorgeous collection well i'm sorry i can't interact with you right now but i'm sending you all massive giant squeezy love and hugs in terms of the chain it's from the spring summer colors for 2022 the trend colors in daffodil so that i have popped a link to both the mini mix and to the chain it's a hand dyed enamel chain those are both in the facebook video which you may be watching live so you can see where you can get a hold of those it is the most cheerful happy chain i think i've ever seen in my life and i thought it went so well with the summery and springtime colors that I'm using in the Adventure Await. So I'm just going to pop the chain out of the way for now before I send it flying to the floor. So you've got all of those beads after what we're using today. You've got a second one of those tassels. You've got some beautiful little rose spacers as well. I, th I like to think of them as rose spacers. I don't know what they're actually called, but that's where my mind goes to. Gorgeous little antique to gold. You've got these bronze colour drops. These I will use to make a tutorial tomorrow, something very similar to this anyway, for a wire wrapped ring. That will be going up on my YouTube if you fancy that. You've also got these more diminutive blues, which have got a really cool feel to them. They're really lovely. It's kind of little puffy heart shapes, I suppose. I do like these. The dye work on this is absolutely magnificent. So you've got loads to work with after, over and above what we're going to use from the blend. Lots of fun left to play with. But what I try to do is to get the beads ready that I want to share with you in the tutorial while we're on the live. So I think what I need to do is just turn that lamp slightly away. That's better. In fact, I might take it away altogether. It's a little bit bright on that top corner. And I think we'll be able to better see the wire work in action as we're going through now. That looks a little bit less glary. So these are the beads we're going to work with. This is what we're looking to create together. Now I've created this in a silver colour round wire. Very engages, but it's all the German style by Beadland, so it's the medium temper wire. If you want to recreate the exact design, it's silver colour round. For the tutorial on the board, I like to use copper, purely because it shows up much better on the camera for me to show you what it is that we're going to achieve together today. So I have already cut a length of wire. It's a very long piece of wire right now. It's around about 15 inches in length. This is 18 gauge, which is equivalent to one millimeter in the UK. If you wanted to replicate, I am using a raw copper round wire as well. Ha ha, I've got comments. Everybody do a lap. Well, I mean, don't do that, but you know what I'm saying. Trudy's in. Linda is in from Tucson. Elvia is in. Hi to you. Jacqueline is in. Linda is in. I love the colours too, my darling. Uh, Celia says, nice and sunny in Lancashire. Got my first Jesse James mini mixes from the UK site this week. Sugar crystal and butterfly wings. One. Oh, the butterfly wings are absolutely stunning. We'll talk about Jesse James UK in a hot second. Helen is there. Hello, darling. Susan is in from sunny California. We're working with your colours today, my love. These are very, very definitely, I think, of California. Margaret is in. Can everybody give me a hot second and wish Margaret a very happy birthday in Edinburgh? Linda is saying that she likes the chain. I'm so happy I've got comments. It means I can give you any feedback if you need it or address any comments on the fly. Gail is in from North Carolina. Hello, my darlings. Phew. I'm so much happier when I know that I can speak to you. Let me just give you a quick wave now I know that you're there. It makes a huge difference to be able to access your comments and address any questions that you have before we get cracking. If you live in the UK or indeed in Europe, uh, it has been not particularly the easiest thing in the world to get the most amazing Jesse James Beads blends. But now you can, because at jessiejamesbeadsuk.com, I think that's right, I'll double check it, 
you can get lots and lots of, of Jesse James Beads goodness into your life very, very simply, direct from a site. It's probably only about 60 or 70 miles away from where I am. It's quite a surprise I haven't driven down there and raided their lot. Anyway, check out all of the links. You can search Jesse James UK anytime and your preferred search engine will bring you to the correct place. Let's get cracking with our tutorial today, but also happy birthday, Mark. There we are. So I'm looking at around about 15 inches or so of round wire. As I mentioned earlier, I like to use copper because it shows up just a little bit better on the screen than the silver does, especially given my board. The colours are beautiful. Trudy says, happy birthday, Margaret. Novi is in. Love the colour. Reminds me of orange juice. Yes, indeed. Pocono Mountains. Is that? I'm not 100% sure if I've pronounced that poorly, and if I have, I'm very sorry. Hello to you, Lynn. Linda also says happy birthday. Gl love to hear you speak in tutorials. You're so kind, Gail. Thank you very, very much. Hello from Tampa, where it's a sweltering 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. What can I say? I'm jealous. Margaret says thanks. You are so, so welcome. Anne is in from California. Hello, my lovely. I hope you are doing well. Should we crack on? Let's have a look. So this is the first part we're going to make together today. And this is going to start with the ever present in wire work wrapped loop. But what we're going to do is reduce the number of times we cut the wire. So this is made from a single long length of wire, not the bar at the top, but the main focal. So the first thing that we do when we're working with wire is grab a hold of one end and give that a little bit of a warm through. So many benefits to warming your wire. Primarily, it gives you warmth that creates a fluidity in the wire. If I just bend that around gently, I'm not using a form, but I'm getting a really lovely smooth arc. And that's because we warmed the wire through. If you take wire directly from the reel and try to put a bend into it in the same way, it's not going to act in the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to come a good two inches from the cut end of that wire, and I'm going to pop a right angle on. So I'm going to grab hold of that wire and then just push that up towards you for a second. So you can see it doesn't have to be particularly rigid right angle, but it's a good size, a, a good angle. It's a good 90 degrees. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn a circular form at the top. And the easiest way I found to do this is in two moves. I'm going to put my pliers into position and rotate them around so that I get the first half of that circular form. Now you can make this circular form quite small because it's going to sit on a bar between two beads at the top. It doesn't have to be massive, it doesn't have to be tiny. The second part of that manoeuvre is to draw the wire all the way around on those pliers so that you get that round form up at the top. And we're going to wrap the tail of the wire around the neck of the continuance of the wire to form a little wrapped coiled section. Now when I grip a hold of that circular form at the top, I'm only ever using the flat faces of the pliers to hold on to a single sweep of wire. I'm not pressing down anywhere the wires cross over. So I'm going to push that tail all the way around and just rotate, rotate, rotate. You can do this with a second pair of pliers if you prefer. But because we warmed that wire first, at this stage it's pretty fluid. If you missed, we're working with around about 18 inches of 18 gauge wire. So I've wrapped five times around that core. I'm now going to stab myself in the stomach with the tail of the wire while I shift that across and just take away that last little bit of tail. Trim that down and I'm just controlling the flatness of the end here before I give that a nice gentle squish and a squeeze, rotate those pliers around to make it nice and smooth. So we've got our wrapped loop and that's going to sit up on the bar of the design. So you could have just this section as a pendant by itself, but I'm going to show you how to create a bar necklace as well, because it is something that you can create so many different looks with. The basics of a bar and a drop, you can have 1500 different bead mixes, 1500 different necklaces, all from the same basic design idea. So I'm going to take the wrapped loop all the way off the uh, camera and add in our feature pendant bead. I'm going to slide that all the way back up against those coils that we just made. Now for this section, what we're going to do is get ready with our little puffy bottomed tassel. I don't know if these are still called tassels or not, but I absolutely adore them. They're so much fun. Let's see if we have any other questions before I move on. 
Happy birthday from Gail. Hi from Austin, Texas. Frosty in Edinburgh this morning. I would prefer mid 60s. Yeah, no, I think I'm I'm good with 80. <laughs> Zoe says I literally just like this on Instagram. It's beautiful. Good evening, Miss Jan. Good day to you, Zoe. I hope you're having a beautiful day, my darling. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. So we're looking at angles now. If I hold the piece sideways for a moment, you're going to see the roundness of that wrapped loop. And when it's sitting in its position on the necklace, you need to be able to get the wire to go through it. So that needs to be perpendicular, I think is the word, or at right angles to the desk. Flat to the desk, at right angles to the desk. And the reason I'm thinking about that quite hard is because my bright brain's a bit mushy today. So I need to think double hard. So the next angle that we're going to make is a wrapped loop, equal and opposite, but at 90 degree opposites to it. So I'm going to push the wire out to the side just to begin with. I'm sure that's about to whack the microphone. Yes, indeed it did. So we've got a straight line in the core of the design. What we need to do now is create a loop that forms around, but we've got ever such a long tail of wire to work with. So it can be a little bit tricky to show you on the camera, but all I'm doing is the same as I did the first time with the short end. I'm now doing that with the very, very long end. So I've created, there I've hit the camera again, jolly good. Wouldn't be a show with Gem if I didn't at some point. I've created the first half of that circular form. Take the pliers away so I can see that it's going to be the size I want it to. And I'm going to bring the tail of the wire all the way around and across. Now there is a bit of a curvature that I've just popped in the wire to make it easier for me to show you. Don't worry about that, you can keep that flat if you want to. I've slightly mangled my circular form, so I'm just going to straighten that up and you can see how easily the wire will form exactly how you want it to because we warmed it first. I cannot stress that enough, it's a game changer. I'm just going to take this off the screen now so I can bring the cut end onto which we need to pop our poofy bottomed little tassel. There's probably a much more professional sounding name for that. And we're going to bring that all the way along, all the way along, all the way along. And then we're going to need to sit that down inside the loop at the bottom. So the size of this one, the size of the loop at the bottom needs to be large enough to fit our little tassel at the base. Or you could be using a different drop bead. It's entirely up to you. I just really like how all of these colours in this piece work together. And I think I'm really going to like it in the copper wire actually because it's quite warm. So once you've got that round form shaped and you've put in your tassel or whatever you prefer to use down at the bottom, thank you very much Celia, you're very very kind. It is jessiejamesbeadsuk.com. If you're in the UK and Europe, that's where you need to go for your beads my darlings. There we go, so I've got my round form. Again, I'm going to support the wire of the loop we've just created. Now, because we've got a piece in position, it makes it slightly trickier to do on camera. In your hand, it will be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to take the tail of the wire around and out of the way for now. And I'm going to pop my bent chain nose pliers across that loop shape. Let me just get my hand out of the way so you can see how that's sitting. Let's have a look. And then I'm going to bring the tail of wire around exactly the same way we did at the top with the short cut end of the wire, but we're not going to trim away this time. So I'm going to just rotate that around once so that you can see how that's going to move through the process. And then what I might do is just coil this up very, very quickly. Bear with me one second. I'll be right back with you. In fact, I might pop you onto the other camera for a moment to show you what it is I'm doing. So I've got all this long tail of wire that I'm working with at the moment and it's going to keep snagging on literally everything in the entire known universe. So I'm going to straighten it out to begin with. I'm going to warm that three or four times between thumb and forefinger. And I'm just going to put the softest little coil in the very end and I'm not pressing very hard because I've warmed the wire. It's going to want to circle up for me. This is a form that will be undone in literally a few minutes time we're going to be undoing that I don't want it to be hard I don't want it to be brittle so I really warmed it first and then just put a little circle in it because it means it's a lot more easy to show you to handle the wire and to be able to show you the wrapping of the loop so I'm going to pop this back down on the board and see you there 
there we go so just pop that around in a very very soft circular form it's just going to be ever so slightly easier to show you now the wrapping of that second loop so where I'm gripping with the pliers is the key part of this next section I'm gripping from one side to the other I'm not putting any pressure on the top of the tassel and I'm not putting any pressure on where the lines cross over I'm just going to tighten that up slightly bring that down so it's against the loop itself I'm going to just turn that around now in your hand you would be taking the wire around the core rather than me rotating the core I'm doing this so I can show you the process with everything in situ with it on camera rather than yanking it out of your field of view and you wondering what on earth it is I'm doing so if your coils come a little bit untidy you do have an option just to neaten them up and again whenever I'm gripping this loop down at the base I'm just making sure that I'm not putting any pressure on anything other than the naked sections of wire that loop around the edges so I'm making it look difficult but it isn't when you don't have a camera in the way so if I just hold this and go by hand this is what you would be doing you'd be literally pulling that all the way around the edge now and um, what we need, do need to do is make sure that we do still have 90 degrees of difference so our tassel drop wants to sit on the flat on the same plane as the board whereas the little loop that we made up at the top needs to be at 90 degrees to the board so you can put the wire through it later so I'm quite happy with how that's turned out again if you do need to you can just pop in there with the very very ends of your pliers and tighten that up slightly before just warming and straightening out the first little bit of wire so I'm giving that a hearty warm through because I want the wire to behave beautifully for me now so again I'm just going to open that out just slightly so that I can get a real beautiful warmth and fluidity ready to go to the next section so what I'm going to do here is start forming with my fingertip and just bring a lovely swooshing shape around if you've warmed your wire it will do this for you until we get that beautiful it's not it's greater than a half circle it's a beautiful great big swoosh of wire to take into account this almost lamp like bead in the center there so before we wrap this long tail around up at the top here what I'm going to do is show you how to wrap on the smaller the crackle the dragon's vein agate or crab agate if you prefer these beads now I talked a lot about movement in my YouTube video last week and how your eye is drawn to certain designs in jewelry and you can create movement with uh, visual tricks such as changing colors so what I thought I would do for this one is alternate between the colors so that you kind of start with an orange one and then go to a yellow one orange yellow orange yellow you don't have to do that you absolutely can if you want to I just think it's a nice trick to create a bit more dynamism not that this needs any help because it is a really lovely feature bead anyway so however you want to work that whatever order you want to work in it's all good love the copper with the bead colors Monica yes me too my love I think it's perfect I think it's perfect so I'm going to set this down for a moment and I'm just going to make sure that I'm really happy with the swoosh design that we've created because I think it could probably be just a little bit tighter to the bead like so so because we warmed that wire it was really easy to get that to form exactly where I wanted it to now there are two schools of thought for this next section we're going to be wrapping our smaller agate beads around the outside of that swooshing arc two things can happen when you do this we could wrap this top section five times around the first core that we made we made a little core wrap up at the top and then we could thread in our finer gauge wire down at the base here and continually wrap around I'm going to show you that wrapping technique in a second what this does is it secures the shape of your swooshing arc really neatly what it also does is it means that you have a slightly trickier time getting the tail of your finer gauge wire down the gap between the swooshing arc and your feature bead so I'm going to show you a different technique now what will happen is that the wires will quite joyfully and happily end up eating each other they will interact in ways that you perhaps wouldn't want them to so for this next section I'm going to unspool probably about 
15 inches or so of 26 gauge round wire. Again, I'm working with copper because when you're working with fine silver wire, it all but disappears on the board. It's very tricky to get enough light, but not too much light. So uh, hopefully you can all see what's going on. The texture of the board is designed to allow your eye to see the movement. I've tried it on a plain white background and the eye can't see as well. So if you have any feedback regarding the background, do let me know. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the short end, about an inch or so, and again, just to reiterate, this is 26 gauge wire. It's around about 12 to 15 inches. I'm taking about an inch, laying it over the top of the swoosh, and I'm going to wrap that a good five times around this lovely long arc. Now, the reason I'm doing it out here and not down here is because it'll be much easier for you to see the action. We need to take the cut end towards the design. So I'm just going to wrap that around, like I say, a good four or five times. And I'm going to do this really loosely, so it's helter-skeltering around. That's plenty of wraps, actually. I'm just going to take that last little bit at the tail at the end and just tighten that up neatly. So you can see that this is really loose and open. Let me just bring that up slightly. Those coils are not nice and neat and tidy, so I'm going to just push them together. It's that simple. I'm going to then drop my pliers off camera and try to hide the panic in my voice as I catch them. I'm just going to tighten that coil up neatly like so before I'm going to slide that now down to the base of the design. So I'm just going to slide, 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 slide all the way down until that coil sits right down at the base of the arc that we made together. So you saw that I wrapped that quite loosely and then tightened it up by taking the tail and moving the tail around the wire, around the core wire here. And then I also just compacted it into a closed spring style design. It will move on the wire until we get it set up with some more beads. And the beads are what's going to keep it in its final position because we're going to fill it. So I'm going to support the design that we have created so far. Let's just get that tassel out of the way. And I'm going to find the other end of that finer gauge wire. And I'm going to pop in my first agate slide that down like it's on a zip wire, whoosh, until it sits against the frame that goes around the edge. Now my finer gauge wire is coming underneath, it's coiled around and it's come out from underneath the arc of wire that sits around the edge, so I'm going to push the bead against that arc of wire, support it, and I'm going to take the tail, and I'm just going to post that down between the bead and the wire itself, so it's come underneath through the bead and then over the top. Now I want to show you how to do this first of all as if we'd already wrapped up at the top. So we're taking the tail of the wire and we're posting that between the bead and the frame that swishes around the edge and we're going to wrap three times in the end. So that's a second wrap, pull that nice and firmly but not so tight that you unravel your initial coil take that tail through and pull that all the way around. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways that you can undertake this section. One of the ways is to wrap up at the top and trim away your excess, and then you will follow this exact course. Obviously, you would need to do that wrapping after you've loaded on your coil down at the bottom. The reason that I'm teaching you two ways is because there's a slightly cheaty way. If I turn the whole assembly sideways, grip hold of where we've started, what I'm going to do is support underneath that finer gauge wire. I'm going to bring in my next bead now, which is one of the very vibrant yellows. I'm going to allow that to zip line down into position. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a cheats wrap. So again, the finer gauge wire has come underneath the swoosh, support the bead against the swoosh, and then what I'm going to do is just very, very gently lift up the tail of wire that we're using. And I'm going to wrap around that tail and draw it down into position. So this is a much preferable way of adding the smaller beads with the smaller wire to the frame wire. It tends to be, once you don't have a camera in the way, it's a lot quicker because you're just, it's almost like knitting or doing crochet or something. Your hands get into something of a rhythm. Tighten up your three coils when you've set them. 
so you you can add those beads on either way obviously you can use whichever beads from the blend you want to but i particularly like the idea of having the alternating colors so i'm going to add one more on here and then i'm going to show you how to tie this section off at the top because it's just repeating the same technique otherwise and you'll get bored of me so there's a particularly hot and feisty vibrant orange agate dragon's vein or crab as you prefer I'm going to push that down against the frame that swooshes around the edge hold the bead in position and then just take the tail around and I'm going to show you at normal speed so that's one two and three and it's done it's really really a lot quicker than posting the end down I have slightly loosened those wires off so we're just going to tighten that up like so boom and then you would add the rest of your beads. Once you've fitted your beads into position, if you find that your swoosh is very big and there's a bit of a gap at the top, one of the beauties of this is that you can spread those beads out like so. So they take up slightly more space on that swoosh. If you find that it's the opposite and you haven't got enough room, you can really tighten those up down at the bottom as well. Let me just give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze. There we go. So that it is quite flexible when you're adding those beads onto the outer swoosh of the frame. When you, I'm sorry, not one. That's not the word I was going for. Once you have added all of the beads onto that swoosh around the edge, we're going to support the whole assembly like so. Let me just pop those out of the way before I knock them flying. And I'm going to take that tail around the top. This is where we started. This is our first wrapped loop. And I'm going to bring that all the way around as many times as I can to fill neatly up at the top. So I've got three. I'm going to bring that over for a fourth. We're going to make sure that that's nice and neat and tidy. And we're going to have a look at what we've achieved so far. So this is the front of our design, making sure that that loop is sitting in the correct orientation down at the base. You imagine that we've filled with the rest of the beads around the edge there. You've got a couple of choices. In my original design, I simply took the tail of the wire, this tail of the wire, around to the back of the design, trimmed away and squished it into the design. You could also, if you prefer, pop a little coil up at the top. Now, I think I'm going to show you how to do the coil, but I'll just talk you through squishing that into the back. If we turn it over to the rear of the assembly, I would simply trim to around about here and then take my pliers and just squeeze that last little bit until it sits as neatly as possible against that loop that we started with. Instead, as an alternative, I'm going to show you cutting around about an inch. That's what we're going to use to create the next section of the design, so don't discard it. I'll just pop it with my beads. What we're going to do is to create a coil, which again, coils draw the eye and create movement in your jewellery. So that's had a little bit of work hardening due to it coiling around the central core. What happens is that the work hardening effect doesn't just occur in the section you're coiling, it travels along the wire as you move. It's science! I don't really understand it if I'm completely honest. So I'm going to take the tip of my round nose pliers and I'm going to start rotating the very end of that wire until I get a circular form. Circular form has begun. And we're then going to switch over to my flat facing pliers. I'm doing this in a very weird handed fashion because I've held the thing up to the camera for you. But the crux of the idea is that we're going to create a coil that then sits down over the neck of the design. Let me just bring that one more little rotation and then push it flat. You can give that a gentle squeeze. And that's what an inch of wire, an inch of 18 gauge wire at least, looks like when it is coiled up neatly. I want to take that just a little bit further over actually. So we can just give that a squeeze from the side, get it to sit into position. So after the live has finished, I'll just add those remaining beads and then assemble it all together. So to make my life easier, I'm just going to wrap the little tail around and get that out of the way because otherwise it's going to get trapped in an unfortunate part of the design so you can see where we're going with this one i will finish that off a little bit later and put photos up at the end of the show i have slightly moved that round form at the bottom so i'm just going to rotate that until it sits how i want it to the beauty of wire is you can generally tell it to do 
what you'd like it to do. So what we're going to do is just see if there are any questions coming up. That's a great tip. Thank you very much. Huggles, Gem. Huggles to you, Jessica. I adore, adore this design from Cheryl. Many thanks, as always, for the inspiration. That means the world. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday to you, too. And hello, Alicia or Alicia. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce that one. So I'll add those beads on a bit later, but what we're going to do now is continue with the bar section of the necklace. So again, your choice of beads, whatever order you fancy, I'll just leave that over on the side in view. This is the order that I used. So I centralised my drop, the lamp pendant. Do you know what? I, th I wanted to call this a lamp to light the way, but I think it's a little bit too wordy, so it's just adventure awaits. And then we've got a couple of the rondelles with that beautiful light, uh, I want to say almost a cognac tone over that vibrant orange. And then we've got some of those buttery spacers as well. So this is the tail of the wire that we were using to create the feature pendant. And by happenstance, it's just the right length. So I'm going to do now what you should always do to your wire, which is give it a warm through. And if you get bored of me saying that, I'm so sorry. It's simply because nobody ever told me how much difference this makes in wire work. I'm self-taught wire artist. So if I've learned something along the way after countless hours of crying about things going horribly wrong, if I can give you something that may make your life just a little bit easier, I really want everybody to enjoy creating jewellery with wire because the empowerment that I felt the first day I made something from like this <laughs> and it came out as jewellery, I felt so good about myself and I want you to feel good about yourselves too. So what we're going to do is add the design to the centre of our tail of wire. If you've ended up with insufficient wire for some reason or another, this is currently around about seven or eight inches of wire, which is more than we need, but it's plenty for the whole project. So I'm then going to pop one of the rondelles on either side and they are, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's almost like an, an AB over the top. I can only apologize for my um, beading. Uh, my eyes aren't what they ought to be, let's be honest. So we're going to alternate the beads on the first side and then we're going to pop a little coil on the end so that we can add a second coil in later. Whoops pop that all the way through and I'm just going to slide that towards the end for a second and support it. I'm going to come probably about two inches from one end and pop a right angle on. And what we're going to do for now is a wrapped loop with a coil. So again, halfway round with the first manoeuvre, pop the pliers back in, draw that tail over the top and around. And I'm going to allow myself to just get those beads and sit up against that coil for now. The next thing that we want to do, obviously you won't have this annoying little section of wire hanging around. You will have completed your design before moving to this bit. So we're going to add exactly the same on the other side, which was one of the rondelles first, followed by, I don't like to call them spaces, they're more like a beautiful, glorious pad. And we're going to complete a symmetrical design like so. Now what I want to do here, I appreciate this is upside down, but it's an easier way for me to show you without getting this in the way. I'm going to add another little loop shape on the other end, but we need to allow some space for the coiling to happen. So I'm going to move the design along a little bit. You can see I've left myself quite a lot of space here for coils. And that's where I'm going to pop the next angle in. So because we warmed that wire, if you make it too large or too small, you've got a bit of space. That looks about right, to be fair. We should be able to get three or four coils plus a little a little bit of decorative nature on the front. If you don't have space for the decorative part, it doesn't really matter either. So I'm going to add in now another little loop. So the first half is always getting the sizing right and then drawing that tail around. Again, I've made that slightly off circular, so I'll just straighten that up slightly. Now at this stage, what I like to do is assess where I'm at. So in order to make a piece like this, a bar necklace symmetrically, it's really easy to do all the measurements and still end up with one side longer than the other. We have sufficient wire here, so if I want my two coils to be the same size, I'm going to trim this to the same length on the second side. You could use a ruler, which would make your life so much easier. 
and we ended up with around about an inch more than we needed which is absolutely fine so again we're just going to create a couple of coils around the core of that bar necklace that's one that's two and that's three just going to straighten that up neatly now you can use a jump ring or you can use a chain or you can use fabric or anything you want with a bar necklace first thing that we're going to do is just try and replicate what we have done on the first side on the second side so again we're supporting the loop whoops you could pop some chain in some different chain in before you create the wrapped loop if you prefer so what we need to do is have those on the same end tighten up those loops or coils really spring type detail around the center there and then what we're going to do is just put the tiniest little coil over the end section i think it adds a nice bit of detail and interest and it almost makes for a floating design so again back in with those round nose pliers whoops very mushy brain today very mushy brain so adding that coil just over the end it doesn't have to be large just adds a nice bit of detail if you didn't want to you could very simply cut the wire and put it at the back of the design and i'm just going to move that until it sits over the surface like so same thing on the other side so i'm just going to flip this over for a second and start coiling around I'm right dominant so often I have to kind of get this in the right orientation for me and what we want is for that coil to sit on the same side as the first coil so I need to just draw that over the front and then continue with the last little bit of coiling I've dropped it my goodness gracious me tighten that coil up and then sit it down over the surface if they're not exactly the same it really doesn't matter we're not going for precision you will have a lot more time and you won't have a camera up your nose getting in the way the point is that you've got a coil on either end and you've got a little bit of space to play with you do need when you're working with beads on wire a little bit of playroom just so that you can add in that beautiful drop now you could make that a really firm V shape if you preferred like so or you could just have a nice sort of rounded drop position it's entirely up to you which way you do it I think I've put the coils on the back what an absolute mad lad if that does happen to you we can fix that simply by pulling them around like so because you warmed the wire you have a little flexibility you can only get away with that once don't want to be yoinking the wire around too much but there you go we fixed that real quick one of the reasons that i like doing live shows where are we hello it's me one of the reasons i like doing live shows with you is that if i make a mistake it's quite possible that one or two of you may make the same mistake and i much prefer to address that with you and say well yeah hands up i did that and here's how to fix it <laughs> and if you can't fix it then we'll have a little bit of a cry together and we'll try not to do it next time but something like that is really super easy to fix so i'm going to take you down to the board now to have a look at where we are at with our design together there we are uh, Kay says thank you for doing these videos Kay in Goose Creek near Charleston mm, hello to you my lovely that sounds amazing I'm so nervous to do wire wrapping but you make it look so easy and beautiful you're very very kind Monica I can only say just warm the wire warm the wire Maureen is in so happy to see you I'm happy to see you too my love even if I can't see your face right now and um, Donna Gem, I love your manner of speaking. That's so kind of you. Thank you. I'm born in Stratford upon Avon, the birthplace of Shakespeare, and I live 22 miles down the road in North Oxfordshire at this time, so hence my accent. Um, Sherry, I want to say your name. Love your design today and the beads. Thank you so much, darling. That's really very, very kind of you. I'm blessed to be able to be here with you. I love being here with you, and I want to thank you for all the warmth and love that you show to me. I really, really do appreciate it. Now let's have a look at this gorgeous daffodil chain. I'm just going to pop this over and out of the way for a second and bring that daffodil chain back in here we go so in order to connect let's just pop my one for today out of the way because I'm going to catch on that wire in a second if I'm not careful in order to connect your bar necklace using the heavier 18 gauge wire let me just make sure I can see what's happening there we go 
into the chain we need a link so just here I've done a wrapped link which is a little bit like a, a super fancy plain segment of rosary linking so it's going to be a little bit trickier to show you on the uh, video screen today but I wanted to tell you how to do it, even if I can't show you up close and personal, because there's only so much that a camera will pick up. What I might do is refocus the camera in a second. Now I'm just grabbing a small section of 22 gauge. In the UK, that's equivalent to 0.6 millimeter. It's quite a fine wire. You could use that for your um, adding on of the beads at the side if you wanted to. What I will say is it will ravage your fingertips if you use it too much for this kind of thing. That's why I like to use the 26 gauge because it, it's just smooth and beautiful. Now in the daffodil chain, let's find an end. What you will see at the very end is there is an aperture. Let me see, actually if I go back to my streaming software let me see if I can refocus this. You get my fingers in your eyeballs for a second. Let's go. See how close you can see it. Yep. Yeah. See that dark section in the very middle between the two yellow enamel segments? There is a hole. You can, let me just drop that back down so I'll show you how to do it. You might not be able to see it super close up. But you're going to aim for that small hole with the end of your. 22 gauge wire and I just want to show you again it is possible to get 22 gauge wire through there and what we're going to do is wrap that around a couple of times now you could use the exact same technique as I showed you earlier which was the wrapped loop but because I'm working with a finer gauge wire I don't want to be pushing and pulling it too much what I'm going to do is to create a nice soft loop through there before turning a right, well it's not really a right angle, but a straight edge that comes away from that chain. So I've got a short length of wire around about an inch hanging out one side of that aperture in the chain. And what I'm going to do now is just pinch very, very firmly. This is my non-dominant hand. And I'm going to take that tail of wire and I'm not going to use pliers. I'm going to go by hand as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to create a spring-like coil around that core. Now when it gets towards the end you will start to feel the end of that wire in your fingertips so that's the point in time that you will want to switch to your pliers. What we're trying to do here is work the short tail. We're working the short tail of wire, we're not putting any pressure on the core. So I'm going to take that all the way around as many times as I can, it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit messy just until that's all the way around the end. So we've got that coil-like or spring-like. Let me just flip that over and show you how to deal with the mucky end. Just get that to sit really, really neatly. And then you've got a connection on one end. And if you cut the daffodil chain, it's really easy to find those apertures, the little holes that you can use to attach into things. So at the other end of this small link, what I'm going to do is to create a right angle at the very end of where that small coil we just made together was before using my round nose pliers to create a, a round section, funnily enough, for the round nose pliers, like so. And that's a much more defined shape that we're working with. So I'm just going to get that into position. And then once I'm going to just go squish to set the shape and you can see I've slightly flattened that wire which is exactly what I want, I want it to be strong and then this we can add on to the bar necklace that we made together like so. So this is how, how to link your daffodil chain into your main feature piece and again I'm just using the very tip of my bent chain nose pliers over the looped section nowhere where wires cross and then what we're going to do is catch literally everything on the board do you know what I think I might do is just take the feature piece out of there because otherwise it's going to be really difficult for you to see. Let me just take that off and then I'll reform that loop shape. The technique will be exactly the same, it just won't have that uh, pendant section in the middle. So we're going to hold on to the looped section that we created together and take the tail all the way around and we're going to wrap over the first coiled section that we made and what we're doing here is increasing strength in that link. 
because you're working with the finer gauge wire you can even come back again in fact that's what I'm going to do because it will make it look so much neater, neater and tidier I was going for a word again that didn't exist neatier is not a word this is how we get all the way back to the loop so I'm going to trim away at the end just imagine if you will that we still have that connection formed tighten up that last tiny little bit of coiling it was just much easier to show you without the link into position but that's how you take a piece of wire to create a link between heavy gauge which doesn't fit through the holes and you can still work with that absolutely gorgeous daffodil chain I'm going to pop this back out of the way and we'll have a look at the finished piece that I prepared for you earlier let me make sure that we are as focused as we can be and I'll just show you that up close and personal let's bring that slightly higher so you can see on the back of my shaky shaky hand just there this linking section is the one that we just worked together that's a 0 0.6 or 22 gauge wire that's created the link between the bar using 18 gauge and the daffodil chain so it is very very easy to attach them onto each other and by doubling up that coil you've super strengthened it so I know that um, it can be discombobulating if you've not seen a fine hole in the chain you can wonder how to attach that all but it was just so perfect let's refocus sorry for my thumb in your eyes again there we go so what I will do with my piece that we looked at together today is I will finish off I will add on those pieces and then you can see the two side by side when they're completed I'll get that done straight after the live has finished and I do want to show you the rest of those beads again before I leave you you have got a gorgeous collection these have got a real beautiful sheen to them then kind of like they've got an under color they're magical beautiful beautiful beads so you've got blues in there as well hexagonal as those uh, large faceted puffy coins which is a gorgeous effect it's almost like there's opaque in the middle with like a jelly coating on it it's absolutely stunning collection let's bring you back up to me for the end of our live together today thank you so much for hanging out with me today i've had an absolute blast it's my pleasure to come to see you here on the jesse james beads facebook page and youtube later on and even on the blog at some point i am guessing if you have any questions reach out to me on the jesse james beads facebook page just tag me I'll, I'll pop some comments in so you know who to tag any questions just give me a shout uh jessejamesbeads.com for the united states jessejamesbeadsuk.com for uk and europe your new easy way to grab hold of all your jesse james beads goodness i hope you have a remaining beautiful weekend i guess it's still quite early in the weekend for most of you stateside we're heading into the evening here in the uk big love and i look forward to seeing you again have yourself a beautiful day bye for now